what does that give me in the way of output? How can I push myself harder? And do I start to lose some of the ability to stabilize from using something like a barbell? Today I did a persist pump workout and I've been doing that predominantly for about four days a week for the last, I would say two months. And what I'm doing is I'm investigating using the, the training format that I have been putting into our program, the subscription for the last, you know, two cycles. I've been using that and then in, and investigating movement pattern splits because there's a lot of supersets in there. I've been investigating on the upper body days like today, biasing one day that's more push dominant and then a second day later in the week that's more pull dominant. And so today was the push dominant day where there was a lot, there was a heavier emphasis on, on chest, shoulders and triceps, but I still did pulling. You saw pulling in the form of a prone row, in the form of band pull apart, in the form of pull ups. Um, so there was certainly uh, an element of pulling which I really like. I like upper body push pull days just because during those rest periods that you're taking from push exercises, doing like an opposing muscle group, um, you know, antagonist muscle group like the back, biceps, you can really sneak a lot more work into a training session without really jeopardizing the performance of the push. So that push pull or squat hinge or even like a squat and a pull movements that are really antagonist, they don't fatigue one another. It's such a great way to train. And because we're fitting in a bit more work into a single session, you know, think about like you're increasing the density of your work. So an hour, you get more work done. There's an argument to be made for like improving work capacity, improving aerobic fitness, improving overall, you know, fitness, which I think is beneficial for people who are trying to look good, feel good, move well, stay in shape, and they don't have hours and hours and hours a day to train. So today was push-pull day. And after a warm-up, which involved some rowing, I like rowing or ski on an upper body day because you're using your arms uh, on both of those implements. Something like a jump rope would also be great on an upper body, you know, push pull day for a warm up cardio movement. I also did some band pull aparts. That's a really like low nervous system contraction just to get blood flow to the, to the shoulders, the rear delts, the scaps. The other movement that I did was dips. You know, dips are a very comfortable movement for me. And I really wanted a movement in the warm up that was gonna give me a good stretch in the shoulder and in the, in the chest. And what that's for me, what that ends up doing is just driving a lot of blood flow to that area and helping me to open up my shoulders before I went into the primary lift of the day, which was the incline bench. So then after the warm-up was done, it was into the intensity superset. And the intensity superset was an EMOM, every minute on the minute, switching back and forth between a prone row and an incline bench. This is a low incline bench, and I find that low incline bench position to just feel really good on the shoulders, and I really get that extra stretch across the chest. Works really well for me. So I think, I think that's really also part of this investigation as I'm testing out future training cycles and movement patterns is, you know, just zeroing in on what movements really work best, not just for my body, but for, you know, our, our members. Um, now, you saw me using some tools that I know not everyone has, like I'm using a Smith machine and I was using that prone row bench that was really high, which I know not everyone has. You can set these things up, but they're kind of, you know, they're, they're a little bit cumbersome to try and set up in your gym. But what I'm looking at was like, okay, if I add more stability to this superset, meaning the Smith machine is more stable than a, just a regular barbell incline bench press, or a prone row as opposed to a bent over row, that's more stable. I was, I'm trying to see over the course of several weeks, like what does that give me in the way of output? How can I push myself harder? And do I start to lose some of the ability to stabilize that I might otherwise 
have gained or maintained from using something like a barbell or a bent over row, something where I have to stabilize a bit more inside my own body. So it's just a curiosity that I have. You know, there's a lot of people that like to knock the idea of using machines or using lots of stability because they're like, hey, you should be able to do that yourself. And I agree, like, I'm not gonna stop doing bent over rows. I'm not gonna stop doing dumbbell bench pressing. I'm not gonna stop doing the things that require more stability from within me. But I just wanna see what's the, what's the trade-off that we're making by going with something very stable like a Smith machine or a prone row versus some of the alternatives. So after we got through the superset, the intensity superset, I did some strength balance work. Strength balance work is typically smaller muscle groups. It's moving in, you know, uh, more uh, subtle angles and planes of motion to isolate different parts of joints. I did rear delt cable flies, which are great for the posterior shoulders and which is really important for maintaining good shoulder health. And then I also did something called a JM press, which is basically like an elbow, an elbowing bench press, where you're putting a lot of the load on the tricep. Um, again, just wanting to have strong triceps that are gonna aid in any pressing that I do. Plus, you know, it's a, it's a muscle group that contributes to all types of presses that we do. But when we're doing big barbell movements like the incline bench press, the tricep might not get overloaded because some of the bigger muscles are taking over the lift. So doing a little accessory work like that is great. It's also great for aesthetics if you're trying to build up your upper arm. So I did the tricep JM press. I also did the reverse cable flies. I did those for sets of 15 and uh, did four of them on each. I was pretty cooked at that point, but I threw in some body weight conditioning, upper body body weight conditioning. So I did some pull-ups, some push-ups, some bench dips, and skiing. And I did intervals there. So I got work, rest, work, rest. I ended up with about six, uh, six sets of that um, over the course of 15 minutes. And that rounded out my pump session from start to finish. The clock read 64 minutes. So I got all of that done. I got a, a warm-up also called a hot start. I got an intensity superset in, I got an, an accessory or strength balance superset in, and then I finally finished with some interval conditioning, and that's my day. And that's what about four days of my week in the gym look like, um, and have been now for a couple months. I hope you had some wins today yourself, and I'd love to hear what questions you have about this type of training format. If you've experienced it yourself, comment below. Take care. Thank mm -hmm. you.